Well, hey ho everybody. Welcome back to the Square the Circle Music Channel. It's uh, once again, your host, your pal, Aaron Major, coming at you from Springfield, Oregon, uh, where we like to talk about circles and squares. We talk about record collecting, music appreciation, uh, all sorts of fun topics. Uh, you know, and it wouldn't be such a, a wonderful kind of like consuming and, and and, and, and ultimately a very um, rewarding hobby um, if it weren't so kind of uh, dichotomous in nature. Always plenty of, uh, I, I don't know if I should say bad, but definitely, you know, lots of uh, things that are, you know, annoyances and things that um, make it difficult and make it challenging. Uh, so, like I said, uh, all those uh, challenges offer up vast rewards when you can finally, you know, achieve a sound that you've been aching for, or you find that gem that you've been searching for, you know, and um, all those little things and all those challenges that go with it, that's what makes it so, so fun and so interesting. Uh, it's fun to have challenges in life, isn't it? Even if they're just kind of like <laughs> silly little hobby type challenges, so... Um, yeah, when it comes to being a collector of vinyl records and a music enthusiast and an audio enthusiast of any nature, um, you definitely have to eat shovelfuls of shit as far as like, you gotta spend a lot of money, um, you gotta go through a lot of frustration and time and energy and effort to, you know, even just amass a small collection of decent records, um, as well as all the gear you gotta buy and all of the you know research you have to keep up on if you really want to like know anything about what you're doing um, it's not for the bush leaguer it really uh, it really isn't and all of you guys in the community and and all that I'm not part of any type of like audio file community or like you know real hardcore you know enthusiasts and techies guys that know about the science. <laughs> I certainly do not. I will not profess to know anything about the science of audio uh, engineering or even just, you know, the master, you know, uh, the masterful art of being a, a listener. Um, I'm still such a greenhorn in a lot of ways, even though this is, you know, a format that I've been enjoying ever since my childhood because I grew up, you know, in a society, in a world that was dominated by, you know, Final, so um, I'm going off on all sorts of tangents, but that's going to be the theme of this new episode, this new series that I'm going to start uh, called The Woes of Being a Record Collector. Um, and all of those little things, like I said, that just kind of like uh, make it so frustrating <laughs> and make it so damn hard, but ultimately uh, becomes very rewarding and, and, and you know, the fruits of that struggle, it really makes it worth it. So today's episode, uh, one of those things that just makes our butt itch as uh, specifically speaking, um, the guys who really like to amass a lot of records and are really into kind of just having tons of variety and something, you know, really incredible to show off to people, collections that get up into the, you know, 800, 900 pieces, 1,000 pieces. People have 2,000, 4,000, 5,000 pieces. It's, it's insane. Um, I'm particularly, I'm not really that way. Um, but uh, when it comes to, you know, acquisition and finding things in good condition and uh, having to pay, you know, pretty big sums of money for stuff that is clean enough to to grace your equipment if you've managed to, you know, pour some money and some time and some effort and research, study, and knowledge uh, into what's going on, you know, on the front end, and then ultimately the back end being, you know, your speakers and what's pushing those, you know, sound waves out to your head. Um, there's, there's a lot more, you know, in the upfront section that people like to pour a lot of their money into. And, uh, I guess that's kind of the focus of my frustrations uh, for this first episode of the woes of being, <laughs> you know, 
uh, an audio file, I guess you could say. Like I said, I'm not going to really put myself in any type of like upper echelon as far as like, I still have young ears to a certain degree and I've destroyed my hearing um, as far as the 42 years that I've been on this planet and the things I've chosen to do for fun uh, have ultimately like nearly completely destroyed my sense of uh, hearing. So um, yeah, I don't really know where I'm going with this, but let's talk about uh, the thing that makes my butt itch most of all uh, when you're going to spend a lot of money on quality audio on vinyl. Uh, one would hope that they would put some real uh, effort into like preserving it so that when it gets to your front doorstep, um, you know, you get what you pay for. Uh, in this instance, this is one of the things that happens quite a bit. If you end up finding, you know, artists and people across the globe um, who do it just, you know, so much better than what you're, you're, what you're used to in your homeland, you know, that happens a lot for me, being a denizen, being a, you know, a card holder, <laughs> card carrying member of the United States of America. Um, so many places in the world do it so much better. <laughs> and that gets expensive because you want these LPs from these, you know, masterful uh, artists and musicians and players, you know, all over the world. Uh, you come across their, you know, what they have to offer the world because of this magical tool that we have called the internet. And uh, it's kind of like, it's getting expensive. It's getting difficult. Um, I've been finding so much awesome shit that you just, you can't buy in the Americas. So gotta order it and I gotta hope to God that it's gonna come to me somehow, some way. Uh, everything's over 50 bucks, you know? So you're talking, you know, you want something great, you're gonna spend $75 for it. Um, in this instance, I don't think I spent quite that much. It was probably $65. The first pressing of a band I discovered late in 2021 and they were my favorite band of that year uh for the it, they made the favorite my favorite album of 2021 and i just got this in the mail today um i had to wait seven months for it because of obviously because of manufacturing production you know supply chain issues whatever the fuck um lots of issues this came out in november of 2021 <laughs> it's may 2nd today and it just came in the mail and it was soggy uh it was it smells musty and it smells like it's been wet for about a month sitting somewhere. Um, nevertheless, this band is fucking incredible. This album is exceptional. It's my favorite album of uh, 2021. And here it is <laughs> in all its glory. Seven months later, after ordering it and paying nearly $70 for it, it showed up to my front doorstep today and it was pretty much wet. Like, I don't know if you can see this, but it, there is quite a bit of water damage. Um, and it's gorgeous. Sorry, the band Jin. <laughs> the band Jin and the album's called Meandering Soul. Uh, my favorite album of the year. And I'm just now finally getting a physical uh, format copy. Uh, really interesting, cool, like, it's like a pale vanilla color, but it has like creamsicle, like little bits of orange in there. Um, really cool. Um, but yeah. The jacket's not too bad. I can deal with a little bit of water damage and it smells musty and it's floppy and it's like, whatever. Um, this isn't, you know, any kind of bad, you know, anything nasty to say about the band. Obviously, they're just, they're just trying to give people their music. But I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's just like, oh my God, it is uh, completely warped. I don't know. You can't see that. Can you see that? It's just lumpy all over the place. I was like, I can't, I'm gonna send that back to France. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, it is what it is. So it's still, you can't really pick up a ton of tone change as it's going along its path, but um, that's what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Like something that you, um, Love so dear, and the band was cool enough to like try to make this beautiful presentation of it, and they did. They, they did an excellent job, but then you wait seven months for it after giving them 
I don't know. I'm a poor schlub, you know, 60, 70 bucks to me on an LP. That's like, that's money I should not really be spending, <laughs> but I do it anyway. And, um, sometimes you get a lump of shit and that's a bummer. Uh, multiply that by, you know, <laughs> a few hundred, uh, cause it happens. It happens a lot. So if anyone's new to this little game of, uh, buy, sell, trade, you know, um, audio equipment, records, you know, you get them any way you can. And, um, sometimes you gamble and you want to buy your favorite album of the year, <laughs> all the way from Bordeaux, France. And it shows up seven months later, soaking wet, uh, wobbly as fuck and barely playable. Um, it's pretty and it's, they're a wonderful band and I still love and respect everything France has done for us. <laughs> Uh, in every way, shape, and form. Um, but yeah, that's what happens when you're a collector. You drop a bunch of money, and sometimes you get a fat pile of shit. Uh, it's like so bad you can barely even listen to it. Um, this one's the same story. I've talked about this, but I love this band. They're called Soup. And uh, they're on that excellent label called Crispin Glover Records. I love everything Crispin Glover Records puts out. Uh, based out of Trondheim, Norway. And uh, these guys are Danish, I believe, but they're called Soup. Um, and I ordered this from, direct, direct from Crispin Glover Records. And it showed up and it's just like, look at that shit. Awful. Everything, the whole thing. Looks like someone spilled a beer in it and just let it fly. Pretty ridiculous. Um, luckily the wax wasn't affected. It wasn't anything that was like, um, didn't sit in a hot truck or anything like, like the old, uh, gin album probably sat in a storage house for a month. <laughs> it was just like cooking and just, yeah, got all sorts of fucked up, but yeah, everybody check this band out too. They're awesome. Soup. This album's called Remedies. Uh, this was put out in like 2018, I believe, 2018, 2019, um, yeah, things are unfortunate. Another $65, you know, probably $70 with shipping. Um, and a uh, big fat bummer is what it is. Um, it's the name of the game. It's the nature of the beast. So that's episode one in my little bitch fest tonight. Um, when talking about things that make our butts itch. <laughs> the woes of being a record collector. Sometimes you just get ripped off. Uh, not necessarily ripped off, but you get, you know, the fuzzy end of the lollipop or what, what did Marilyn Monroe say? Something like that. Uh, all right. Well, this is your pal, Aaron Major, signing off the Square of the Circle Music Channel here in Springfield, Oregon. Um, I want everyone to have a wonderful day tomorrow and, uh, peace be with you.